what is happening here? I have a terrible voice, but I'm thinking the Lionel Richie song. Look at this. Roots, roots, roots. Branching roots. Branching roots. And this is what I've been waiting for. Let me turn it around and see if I can get this in shot. More roots. I am not able to reach all the way. Hang on a second. If I can risk this. There we go. More roots. And this is my... which is today going to move into a pot. So very carefully, very gingerly, with the smell of somebody firing up a barbecue in the background. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to spray this down a little bit more. I already did so this morning. But as it is hot, I have to do it again because now I'm going to take it apart. And welcome everybody. Sorry, a bit late on the intro there. Thank you so much for joining me in moving my dendrobium tortile into a pot. And why am I doing that when I keep talking about how little real estate I have in the winter? Well, that is because this doesn't come inside and it has all the space to grow and thrive outside. So I am quite happy to be able to move it into a pot and then not have to worry this year with regards to so much water or missing the mark in watering it enough. So I'm just preparing the pots, waiting for the sphagnum to soak up a little bit. I don't know if you've seen my pendant dendrobiums video, but I featured this and my dendrobium of film in a video because basically the two of them get the same care. So I put them all together and in my climate here in the Mediterranean I can go down to five degrees Celsius and for that reason this one is quite all right to remain outside. Where I'm going to put it when uh, once it's potted up is in the same kind of orientation as the current situation. If it was hanging, it will still be facing the same way. So now I'm just trying to gauge a stake. Normally I use my white doohickeys, but in this case, I don't want white. I want it only to need, maybe need something to establish it in while it gets roots and then I can pull it out because long term I am not planning on having it staked up like this. This is just to secure it if in the event I find that it is wobbly. Excuse me, I need some tape because I want to tape up the bottom of the stake as it will be in a very humid environment for quite some time. And maybe not quite some time, never know. Maybe this thing is just gonna sit there and get on with it. But we shall see. I just want it to be prepared just in case. So this will prevent my steak from rotting out, even though it has like a little plastic thing around it. Eh, it doesn't hurt to double up. You will be hearing some background noise. 
This is not the lunchtime hour yet in Spain. I hope that doesn't bother you, but I wanted to get this done as soon as possible. So let's see if that fits. There we go. It fits. I stick it into the hole in the bottom and take it as far down as where the mask is. So that gives me some kind of stability. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to be getting rid of this. So first of all, let's do some housekeeping. Let's get rid of some things that we do not need and that could be in the way. All the spikes. I've already sterilized my clippers in advance. This could potentially be a long video simply because of the nature of the beast. So we shall see and I appreciate you for being here very much. Thank you. Have you got Dendrobium tortilla in your collection and do you keep it mounted? Can you keep up with its watering needs? I'd be interested to know. For two years I've been able to manage quite well, but uh, I think my limitations have come because I would need to re-moss anyway. I would have to be re-mossing this now because of the new root starting. Instead of re-mossing it, I'm taking it off and putting it in a pot. You can see here I had some kikis that didn't make it and I'm going to take that cane off at the base because it is dried up. There's nothing left in this cane anymore. Okay, this could prove to be a brutal exercise. I'm okay with that because it's early days in its root growth. I still, it will be forgiving because I'm doing this so early on and it has only just started doing the root thing so there'll be plenty of time for it to recover if it needs to. This hook is going to be a, an issue I think. Okay, let's turn you around. <clears throat> I don't know what this grass is. I mean, it's pretty, but not on my dendrobium. It's becoming as big a monster as my dendrobium is. Let's see where we're at. Let's have a look. Pull, pull, pull. My inorganic mounts. Hmm. I love them. I should not have any issues whatsoever getting this off with the least amount of disturbance. That was the idea by using these inorganic mounts from the start. Careful. I mean, yes, we are in the early stages, but still, we do have to be a little bit more careful. This is going to be nail breaking exercise. There we go, that's one. I don't want to yank it just yet. I want to see what's going on underneath. So I just want to comment in the middle of uh, while I'm doing this on something that has come to my attention and I really, really appreciate your feedback. When I listen through my videos before I post them and I have music in the background, I obviously wouldn't post a video if, if I thought it was obnoxious. Um, so there's two things. My dog's barking. Yeah, I, oh, when you're in the middle of filming, it's a bit tough for me to stop and then start again because you're actually in the middle of doing something. So you'd have to pretty much just keep going. So I sincerely apologize for that. Um, and I know that it can be a nuisance. I do get it. I am not offended by that. I get it. Sometimes when I listen back on my own videos, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so annoying. 
and then I post them anyway, begging your forgiveness. On the other hand, the music. When I listen back, I'm thinking, oh, you can hear me fine, the music is not a distraction. But I appreciate your feedback on that because obviously I know what I'm about to say. I mean, duh, I'm doing it, right? So I didn't feel the music was too loud. However, clearly it has been. And I apologize for that. It's taken a while to amend the, and rectify the situation simply because when it was brought to my attention, I already had uploaded certain videos. So please don't feel ignored because I have not ignored you. Um, I am working on the new videos to have the music there with the exception of one. So, you know, I posted one where the music stopped and I wasn't, I wasn't too keen on the result, but I posted it simply to, you know, to get some feedback and see what your thoughts would be if there was silence in the background. So the next videos that I posted were with the music, but a little, well, a lot, lot quieter. I hope that was the plan. So if you're watching this and you're seeing new videos that are with the music much quieter, please let me know if that works for you as well, just to, that you can hear me. Um, and then that there is a little bit of music in the background. Maybe I can compromise that way and you, you could just let me know how, how that comes across. The whole microphone situation was a bit of a COVID disaster because I ordered my microphone and on the 9th of March before even a lockdown was discussed. And then the lockdown was implemented on the 13th of March. So everything was put on hold, not my order, because I thought, well, now it's done, I'll wait and see. But all over the news, they were talking about only essentials being shipped. And I just snapped a root. They were talking about only the essentials are gonna be shipped. And that's, that makes perfect sense. So I didn't get any updates from UPS at all. And this is not just a microphone, etc. This is this was quite a big expensive order of, you know, electronic kit to help me deliver a better quality. Turns out after 3 or 4 weeks I decided to have a look <clears throat> what is going on because then all of the things had sort of like established themselves. There was a rhythm going. I was getting Amazon deliveries, so I thought, mm, let me have a look and see what's going on. It turns out that they had printed my address wrong. UPS did not make an effort at all to contact me to verify the address, and they just sent it back, and I had no clue until I contacted the supplier of my microphone and all the other electronic kit and they confirmed they had got it back and they wanted to know why and I'm like well because somebody in your storage facility or shipping center or whatever did not print out my address correctly and on top of that UPS did not even bother asking or calling to say we can't deliver this parcel because apparently they tried three times and I'm like uh, dude Everybody's at home. There is no way that you tried three times to deliver and you didn't even bother to call. So I'm sorry about that. And that's why I'm shouting a little bit. But I hope still it comes across better than me sitting here thinking I'm talking to somebody that's standing right next to me. So these are the two things that I wanted to mention while I pick this apart. Um, if I think of something else that I just wanted to bring up and update you on and let you know about, I will uh, restart the video. In the meantime, I'm going to take care of this mess on my own and I'll be back when I'm done. Right. 
a few many minutes later excuse my dirty hands please just want to show you what was the problem this grass bit that was making its home is the problem my goodness there's more roots tangled in here from the grass than from the dendrobium but it's good because these are the first roots that I got it with they don't all look compromised but now I'm going to tackle this area right here which could just mean a radical chop because those grasses whoa, that was the difficulty getting it off I need to make sure I'm okay with these guys yes I want to keep these here I do but here is the future so I'll see you shortly this people's is a nightmare so why did I leave it I had to cut this off all these roots are gone why did I leave it so long with the grass look at this there's no way to get through that not even with a skewer to take it apart so why well basically it helped me keep the plant humid around the root ball for much longer in the summer it was actually acting like an additional humidity supply around the root ball but there's a price to pay now and this is what it looks like now and yes i'm going to put it in a pot like this because i've gotten most of the stuff off I've got new roots coming in the back. I really, really need these. Now I really need them. And I'm not going to stress this tortilla anymore by trying to get rid of the roots because I was working with a very bad pH water as well. So I'm going to soak it now in calcium, magnesium and my normal fertilizer mix for maybe 30 minutes. And then we'll see how we're going to pot this one up get you in there because obviously I have not much to work with in the pot anymore but we'll figure something out first let's put some strength into the plant and get it out of the Sun obviously I was not anticipating that grass to have done what it did so it's late in the day and I need to get this out of the sun. Oh my goodness. The noise pollution the past couple of hours has been absolutely insane. You can still hear it going on in the background so I can't have it soaking at infinitum. So we're just going to have to hopefully you can just grin and bear it. I would appreciate that. Oh, maybe it's just stopped. Oh, that would be awesome. We have a few things to contemplate because this is clearly not the best and most ideal, no, there it goes again, circumstance that my tortilla finds itself in. But I'm going to do this anyway. Despite the fact I have massive organic ball there of stuff I'm going to plant it as is and then I'm going to hope that it will be okay with the generous amount of flushings that I do I would like this root to go around this cane but is it worth the risk let me see let me see let me at least give it a go so I'm just going to follow up on what I mentioned earlier about my microphone and stuff just to let you know that I am now looking into a different kind of mic and one that is uh, wireless and mobile because I have a few video ideas where I'm actually you know I want to move around and not be tied to my DJI Osmo pocket I want to be able to move around put it on a tripod and still have good sound so that's where my head is at the moment just to follow up on that thought from earlier 
But, um, oh, we've got the builders going, the gardeners going. I mean, wow. So, in the end, this stake actually is going to come quite handy. For now, it is looking like the growths are going to go this way. But the orientation of this orchid will force them to go in that direction. And I managed to get that root bent across. All the roots from the new growths are heading down at this point, And that's exactly how I want it. I have a few wire things here in case I need to strap the orchid into the pot. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but if push comes to shove, then I'm going to make like U stakes and just force them in. I'm not concerned about or worried about having anything to do with the roots that are going down the new roots. They're too short at this point in time to even make do any damage and I'm so glad to be doing this and having had to be so radical that I am able to rely and count on the new roots. So all this organic stuff in my inorganic media, yeah, I don't like it, it's not ideal. But if I wanted to take all of that off, I would have to literally go all the way back to the cane. And that is not going to happen. I'm not going to do that. I think that it's going to be absolutely fine. Time will actually take its course with regards to the organic media breaking down. The important thing is that there is more inorganic in here than organic. So I'm okay with it. What a task, my word. Just because of my humidity, lack of humidity levels, I let that grass grow. I had no idea about that root system developing and doing so well. well now you know as well. I learned something new there, grass and all that stuff will thrive on everything you provide for your orchids that are meant for the orchids. They love it as well and they do really well. So if in doubt and you want to grow grass, then by all means, do it the orchid way. Okay. So this is looking rather awkward. But I'm going to put it in its place where it's going to live and show you what I mean about its orientation. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think we've got the timing right. I'm not particularly concerned about that. But my beautiful pendant growth habit obviously has changed. It's going to be interesting to watch this develop in my opinion and I'm definitely going to be monitoring it closely. If I see that it is not doing well, I am taking it off immediately and I'm going to find out another way to mount it where I can maintain the root ball humid during the hot summer months. My contemplations when I do these things is always worst case scenario. Am I able to take care of worst case scenario? And if the answer is no, then I don't want the orchid in my collection. If once I have an orchid in my collection that was doing really well, and then future projections it looks like it won't I will do my best to adapt it to my environment based on its new and improved requirements and then I watch closely 
all the while keeping my fingers crossed that it won't hate me from here on in and die or suffer. I can see that one day I'm going to need a rock right here. So this is my just plain RO water at 5.8. This looks really weird, but we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Let me get it ready and put it into its place and I'll show you. Alrighty, so this is where it's going to live. I'm going to have to watch the heat of the sun. I may need to have to put up a separate screen because this used to live in full shade at this time of the year. But we'll see. My intention is, as you can see, the new growths are sticking out towards the wall back there. But based on the direction of the sun coming from the opposite side, my intention is for it to move over and curve over and fall in line with the rest of the growths. At this moment, it's taking up a massive amount of real estate, but you know what? In winter, it's gonna be absolutely fine. I've got plenty of room. And in the summer, everybody else can be elsewhere. That's okay. If I think that this is too sunny and too hot for it, I will move it once again. So we've got neighbors of the Cattleya Iricolor, Dendrobium, Krista Erdmann in the back there, which was a gift from Luke, and Seiden Fadenia here, doing all right. I've lost one spike, but it, this is not about Seiden Fadenia. The only thing I want to say is it's doing all right. It's growing new roots. I can see them, and that's fine. Anyway, those are its neighbors. I didn't like what I had to do. <clears throat> Needs must. Fingers crossed. And thank you everybody very much for watching. Any questions, any suggestions, anything at all, please leave that in your comments below and I'll be very, very happy to address it. Take care, everybody. I appreciate your patience with me. Bye.